good after, good evening, everybody, on Monday, and God bless you. Uh, we're at the Lexington Church of God, digging deeper Bible study class, and pastors sitting, uh, you know, spatially close to me and far, or far away, whichever you, you can tell from where you, your perspective. But um, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to be talking about a, a Mystery Babylon coming out of um, Revelation chapter 17 and 18. <clears throat> this is a subject deep, wide, and continuous and can go in all kinds of directions. I know that there's a lot of uh, different schools of thought and theologians kind of go all over the map <clears throat> and then some people get really weird. So we're going to uh, look at this tonight. Pastor, go ahead and pray for us. Okay. Father, we love you. Thank you. Praise you for this opportunity to be in your house. Father, we thank you for uh, every opportunity we get to open your word, to rightly divide it, to apply it to our lives, and Father, for it to help us grow. Father, we pray that you would uh, be with us tonight. Speak to us through this word. Uh, we, yes, we pray for prayer requests. We pray for folks in need. We pray for folks who are sick. We pray for folks that need touches in the body. But Father, uh, tonight we're going to ask you to touch our minds and touch our hearts. Father, I pray that you'll open someone's eyes tonight, Holy Spirit. Father, let them see this word of revelation in a whole new way. I pray, Father, anoint my brother to preach and teach the word like you've placed in his heart. I know his heart is for you. I know his heart is for the church. And I pray, God, that you'll, you'll use him in conversation and indeed to apply the word rightly the way it's supposed to, Father, to open the eyes of someone who sees needs to see you. I pray, God, you'd anoint those individuals to hear and to see and be with us tonight. In Christ's wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Does anybody have any idea or any thoughts on who Mystery Babylon is? And there's really no wrong answer. I mean, because, uh, yes. New York City. We, who else? Iran. Okay. I mean, these, these, are, these are good uh, ideas. Different schools of thought. I've heard people say uh, Saudi Arabia because of Mecca. Mecca as a city, yeah. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Anybody else? Rome. That's the old kind of school of thought, right? And the last uh, 10 to 15 years, <clears throat> some people have moved away from that. Um, I, th I definitely think there's a lot of good uh, facts or think you know, scriptures that point to Rome. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? So, Rome, Saudi Arabia, Mecca, New York City. There's, there's one that I'm kind of, you know, looking for and hadn't, hadn't heard yet. And I've talked about it before a number of times, but what about... Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, is that what you said, Dick? Yeah. Tel Aviv. Okay. So, uh, and there's a dead giveaway in Revelation, and we're going to look at that. But let's go ahead and do some reading right here, starting at Revelation 17, verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here. I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Okay? Talking about harlot right there. And we've mentioned before that um, a woman is used as an example or for a, um, a religious system in the Bible. Right. Right. And we as the church, we're the bride of Christ. Okay, and she's to be pure. So, this talking about committed acts of immorality, of fornication, of adultery, it's actually talking about not to mix, not to mix. And so, but, uh, it's talking. It calls her a harlot. She sits on many waters. What do you think sitting on many waters means? Oh, man, sitting on many waters. Um, oftentimes I've thought about many waters as in peoples because out of the, out of the sea, 
is where nations come from. Correct. And That's so right. I would say that would be nations of people, many, many peoples. Yeah. So this great harlot, uh, which is, you know, a religious system, is uh, kind of a worldwide phenomenon. Or it's, a, you know, it's dealing with many different people. Yeah. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. Let's see, that in the King James, that's going to say fornication yes. right there. And adulteries in the NIV. Back to the NASB. So the kings of the earth, these kingdoms, whether they're nation states, they don't necessarily have to have a king per se as the head of state, but they're, um, they're all involved with this, this system that's in place. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. Now, when we think about a wilderness in the United States, we think about like a bunch of woods and mountains and trees, but Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming. Everybody or, wants to go or, to Wyoming. Or Alaska or something. Yeah, get off the grid. In That's the Middle right. East, <laughs> in the Middle East, a wilderness was a desert. Yeah. No water. No, not a whole, no trees, you know, not a whole lot of nothing right there. So the Spirit carried John the Revelator, you know, away and give him a vision. And he said, I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names having seven heads and ten horns. Now what what does that seven heads and ten horns remind you about? Yeah, I I, I tell you, um, it's just a number of people who are, who are leading. When you when you think about a woman riding the beast, now and another thing, a lot of folks, this is metaphorically, and so it's it's what you're reading is metaphorically. Uh, so it's not like people are literally going to be drunk. It's not like people are literally going to be sleeping with this this lady. And so a lot of times folks get confused because they they don't see the metaphors. But what they're saying is is they're going to commit adultery, as in religious adultery, uh, with a with false god, and it's going to make them drunk, as in it's going to make them uh, nonsensical uh, and do dumb things. And so we're almost to that point right now. But when I think about her sitting upon this, this scarlet beast, I think of the dragon. I think of the devil. The system comes in with, with the devil and his system. Uh, when I think about the, uh, the, the, the seven heads and ten horns, I'm thinking about seven individuals in the form of, of, of like... Uh, uh, ten sets of power. Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah. So ex uh, exactly, and, okay. and this is the traditional. The the dragon has actually already been identified previously in Revelation. It, it says it's the devil. It's that serpent of old, right? So, well, a lot of this is not as big a mystery as as people think, and it's not as difficult as people think. But there's a lot of different schools of thought, and we kicked some of these out. And so we're just trying to nail this down and uh, then try not to look at it in Americanized yeah. eyes, right? Yeah. But so it's this harlot, prostitute, so, and she's sitting on a scarlet beast. And so there's seven heads, and this, this beast has all these blasphemous names and has seven heads. And we know that um, Rome was built on seven hills, right? The, uh, but did you know that Mecca was built on seven mountains? I did not know that. So there, there's a, a, a couple of things going on right here that you have to pay attention to. Uh, the, verse 4, the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality so what does her having on purple and scarlet does that mean anything uh yeah, right off and i have to say my brothers he uh he didn't pop he didn't quiz me he didn't give me any type of leading tonight um it's amazing how uh, and i do want to say i've pastor darcy i've only been into the book of revelations 
for probably three to five years. And I, I really don't feel like God really opened my eyes to it uh, until this past year to, to just a whole lot. Just uh, one day I sat down in my study and I said, Father, I, I want you to show me the book of Revelations. And I prayed and I read through the whole book of Revelations about three times in a row, taking my time and making my own personal notes. And I believe God really revealed a lot. So if you're out there and you're studying for the first time, you don't have to be a deep biblical scholar to get this. Just pray and let God speak to you and he'll reveal it to you. And so uh, uh, I've, me being pastor, I've always been centered on Christ and centered on evangelism and centered on growing the church because that's what I feel God has given me my gift to do is to, to reach people. But I, I didn't understand revelations like I wanted to. And to be honest, I felt like my brother uh, had one up on me a lot because he's, <laughs> he knows so much about it. And, I was, and so I thought, Lord, I, I want to know the revelations as well. And so, so now he's pop quizzing me tonight and he didn't give me any, any prompting on this. But um, when, when you look at this, uh, that, that's right, that's right, that's right. This is, Where, the, this is the best way to learn sometimes. It though. really is. It okay. makes you dig deep. Yeah. But uh, when you think about purple, what do you think of? You think of royalty. You think of royalty. Um, Priesthood. You, you think of the pope. You think of the pope. You think of uh, the bishops. They have, mm -hmm. a, they have like what um, in the Catholic Church, they have like the Senate and the House, yeah. right? And they wear these robes and... And, and it has gold on them. Also, though, being in, um, you know, going to Israel a few times, one of the last places they take you is they take you by the, the diamond factory. Mm, didn't know okay? that. Okay? And they don't make the diamonds there, but 80% of the world's diamonds run through Israel. Most people don't know that, Right? So this is little tidbits I filed back, and then I'm reading this. Then I can pull that out. Wait a minute. That's also when you start thinking about the Illuminati and the banking cartel and the system. Jerusalem starts making a whole lot of sense in that um, only two nations on the planet don't have our monetary banking system, you know, so it's just another thing that's that's running through my mind as we reading this, okay? So we're not we're not like going down one particular road, but we're just kind of looking at this and just like somebody would if uh, reading it on your own. So, but this woman, um, everybody's kind of jumping in bed with her, yeah. and and on her and and the Bible says on her forehead. I watched some funny kids videos on YouTube over the weekend and this one little girl uh, she drew all over her face and she was her mom was like w you know what happened and she said daddy did it daddy yeah. did it you know yeah I get that a lot. but this is almost like saying God is telling us this one is blatantly obvious who this is it's writ wrote on her forehead yeah all right? It's no, no mystery. This is, hey, this is something that's been going on for a long time. And on her forehead, a name was written, a mystery. And we talked about how in some of these other translations, mystery is capitalized right there. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at this in the Greek, but this is the NASB, which is probably a little more uh, along the lines of what the original manuscripts it's were. It's a good version. I use it Okay. As well. So... Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. So what when you say, when I say the mother of harlots, what, what comes to your mind? Well, the mother of harlots, it, it don't get any worse than that. It, it doesn't. Um, uh, imagine uh, the mother of harlots, she would be the one. First of all, you think about a mom. A mom is supposed to nurture and supposed to love and supposed to encourage and supposed to supposed to always make sure you're on the right track. Yeah. But this one's the mother of harlots, which means that she's almost the inventor of. She's almost as in she's she's so far gone. She's like at the top of the list. Let me help you. The uh, so y'all think you get the idea of there's a bunch of little baby harlots running around. That's not what the scriptures actually implying. Mm. Hey, you remember when. Uh, desert storm and Saddam. This is a Jewish, this is a Middle East uh, idiom. And what did Saddam say? 
When we come over there and we bring our armor there, it's going to be the mother of all battles, right? No, it wasn't. It kind of fizzed out on their side. But this is, this is, this is the big harlot, harlot of all harlots. This is the mother of harlots, okay? That's kind of what's, what that's saying right there. Um, but all these, not every single one, but all this worship that's been going on, you know, from, from the beginning is tied into this system right here. Okay. So, and I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered greatly. So there's a couple things come to my mind. What, anything come to your mind on that? Uh, drunk with the blood of the saints, um, my thought was is that she's guilty, I believe, of their literal death. That's, I agree. that's my opinion. And uh, we know that the Roman Catholic Church put to death millions of, of believers because, you know, through the Inquisition, Spanish Inquisition, and during the Dark Ages, and they, you know, they were polled and quizzed about transubstantiation, and, you know, they just told what they believed, and they died at the stake. They were all kinds of tortured. But also, who else has been has put some Christians to death in modern times, in the last five years, eight years? Muslims, right? And re remember, Dickie, when we talked about how there's some Muslims that read Revelation, and when they see uh, the 666, they actually said, hey, that's a mistranslation, and that's supposed to be a bismillah, hmm. right? That's their, their sign when you they see it in the Greek yeah. right there. It almost looks identical, and we we've taught we had a lesson on that, like you know, a couple times three years back. But which I, it's puzzling how many things kind of fit together, and and it could it, you know expose one line, and it shows evidence of something else. But yes, this um, this woman, this religious system, has put to death a lot of believers. During the tribulation period right here, especially. But this, we don't know exactly how far. This could go back thousands of years. Yeah, it could. Oh. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? See, we got, we got some angelic help right here, right? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Mountains in symbolic language as uh, like kingdoms and, and rule heads are like kingdoms and crowns are like, uh, you know, the head of a kingdom. The beast that you saw, now this is a tricky one right here, was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. So the beast that you saw, we got to go back to Daniel. We, we're not going to, Go there scripturally, but go back, read all the way through Daniel. Focus on two, chapter 2, focus on chapter 7, okay? Um, chapter 7 of Daniel breaks it apart. And, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's dream that Daniel interprets, and he tells us of these kingdoms, and then Daniel 7 breaks that apart into these creatures. And so... In Revelation, John gives us an amalgamation. He, he combines these things together and takes parts of each one because they were kind of in succession. Yeah, if, if, you, if you read that text and you know the Bible and you're just studying it casually, um, that text right there will almost trip a Christian up and make you think that we're living in, in the millennial reign and, the, 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 and some folks actually believe that the devil is locked up right now and that this is as good as it's going to get and he's going to be loose later on. But that's not true and that's not what this text is saying. But, but sometimes that will mislead just at face value. The Bible's not misleading. The Bible's never misleading. But at face value, if you know enough about the Bible to be dangerous, and we all do, sometimes that, 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 that gets misinterpreted that way. And I know that's not where you're going, but I, I just no, want to no, throw no. it out there. That people ties in, that. and I, I want to, like, Give you a, it's not a loaded question, but a little bit. 
Yeah. What those those four kingdoms in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. What were those nations? Does anybody remember? Oh man, yeah. Um, Greece. That's okay. Yes, you, you got the midsection. Yes, 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 yes. Greece no. means per- yeah. Babylon. Yes, is the head of gold, yes. right? The Medes and the Persians. Remember, we've we've, we've talked about all this. Yep. Is you know they they took over Babylon, <laughs> and then um, Greece took them over, and they. Then who was the leader of Greece? Of course, the Alexander the Great. You know, he died. I think he was like 32 years old or something. And his four generals, you know, took over. Then Rome. And then Rome breaks apart into the eastern leg and the western leg. So you got two legs coming down, right? And so that's showing us that somehow, to me, that's showing that somehow the Roman kingdom is tied into it and extends down either though even though it loses power in a sense it still has power this is traditional uh, it, the Roman Catholic Church yeah all right oh we we America we are still a part of the Roman Empire yeah we we were the revived Roman Empire it didn't it didn't die in 500 AD with Constantine or 400 AD right it, it, it moved north and went on into Germany and England and when England moved over here, it brought mm-hmm. the Roman Empire with it. So we we are, like it or not, the revived Roman Empire. So we're we're possibly so we, in one we school would be of thought leg. is the young leg. lions of Tarsus. Is how some okay. biblical scholars we're because in one of the kingdoms in one school of thought was the which kingdom in modern times, and I'm talking about in the past few hundred years. This, it, it was said of them that the sun never set on their empire. This is an easy one. No, it was the British Empire. Right? And the sun never, remember they were in India, they were all over the world, and they said the sun never sit, set, and uh, this is where you get into the East India Trading Company, yep. which was, uh, you know, run by the Illuminati. Kind of, we, We're not going there tonight, but I want you to see that one school of thought is Europe, Great Britain, and the United States as being a young line, an offshoot of that kingdom. Okay, this is just throwing some a lot of stuff out, but so we have Babylon in in Daniel two. We have Babylon, the Medes and the Persians, Greece, and then we have the Roman Empire. Oh, who were before that statue? That, that's a yes, because see, you know, they're um, coming out of bondage. They're coming out of Egypt. So there's seven heads and ten horns, but some have already been falling, right? And there was even one prior to that, right? In Mixed in the Assyrians. Yeah. All right? So, and some people lump the Assyrians in with Babylon. Assyrians and the Assyrians in Egypt. You're right. You're and right. sometimes the Antichrist, in, in, he's identified in the Old Testament as the Assyrian. Okay? So, but, so, and I said all that to get back to verse 8. Because John, in John's time, what is the kingdom that's running the, running the world right there? Rome. The beast that you saw was, it used to be a empire or a kingdom, and is not. So it can't, to me that says it can't be Rome right there. Because see, John's writing it in real time, and he's saying this was a kingdom that existed, but is not right now. Could there possibly have been kingdoms pre-flood? We know that Jude tells us that all those fallen angels from Genesis 6, where are they now? Where are they? They're locked up in the abuso, the abyss, right? And they're going to be released during the tribulation period. So this could be a kingdom that we're not even familiar with, right? I mean, I'm just throwing different things out here. The beast that you saw was and is not from John reference point and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction 
Now we know that because of reading in Revelation prior to this that during, you know, sometime during the tribulation period or right, right at it or something, this is when the bottomless pits opened up and these fallen angels come back out. And remember, it says in Jude and also Second Peter that they're locked up in chains reserved unto judgment of the last day. And I'm paraphrasing right there. And those who dwell on the earth, so let me read, get it back in context. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth whose name has not been written, written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will wonder when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. So you got any other thoughts on that? Well, actually, I have a theory on who that is, Okay. but we can't cover all that tonight. All right. And maybe I'll do that in, in, in the Bible teaching sometime. Okay. Nine. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, I'd already told you that Mecca sits on seven mountains. Okay? Rome sits on seven hills. And this has both been, people's tried to apply both of these. Also, a mountain represents a kingdom. So this could be saying, this seven heads are seven kingdoms. Now listen, we're talking about Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greece, Rome. Right? Then it could be the British Empire. It could be this, the, but it's going to be connected because I'm going to read this next passage here. And it's going to be an eighth that comes to be. What is the kingdom that everybody's working on to bring to fruition right now. Yeah. What do we the new world order, right? Now they I, we've we've talked about before how the um, UN when their their original headquarters and I believe it was in Brussels, it's even in the shape of the Tower of Babel and their poster has a crane on it. They're building back the Tower of Babel. I mean, you know, that's that's kind of stuff like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Why do people do that? <laughs> there's a reason right. why. There's a, why there's why reason. does the mark of the beast, that the, the stuff that lies, why is it called Luciferase? Yeah, why name something know, that? But anyway. And, yeah, and I looked that so, up. That's, that, that's, that's not that I don't trust you, but it's a real thing. <laughs> and why name something that really? unless there's something behind it? You know, we should always look behind, no matter if you're preaching, I'm teaching, or whatever, who's a, whoever's ministering, dig it out for yourself, yeah. right? Follow this stuff up. The beast which, okay, and they, they are seven kings. Five are fallen. So now John's putting this in perspective. One is. The other has not yet come. So what about, uh, like, Greece, Babylon, right, Medes and Persians, Assyria, Egypt. Now I'm naming nations. There's been other kingdoms. But these are nations that directly were at war and tried to wipe Israel mm -hmm. off the map. Pagan nations, yes. Right. Five have fallen. One is the Roman Empire at that time. The other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must re remain a little while. Now, I kind of just showed you my school of thought on verse uh, 10 right there. The beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is, uh, and is one of the seven and he goes to destruction. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. The new world order plan is to break the planet up into ten sections. <laughs> I mean, you know, and... Um, Ever since there's been a United Nations and, and uh, Europe's kind of been unified and it went up to like 28 nations and people keep looking for it to go back down and drop out seven. You know, they, they try to, everybody's trying to make it fit. Listen to this. They receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These guys are not necessarily truly going to be known but until the tribulation period. Or possibly it could be setting up right before it. These have one purpose, 
and they give their power and authority to the beast. Remember, the beast is not the woman. Because what's the beast going to try to do? Destroy the woman. He's going to turn on the woman and try to yeah. wipe her out. And he's also, the beast is not the false prophet. No. There's, there's two of them there, and, and we're all looking for the beast, but we forget there's one that comes before him. Yeah. It's that false prophet, and he's going to cause everyone to worship the beast. That, he's just as dangerous as the beast. So, so. in that respect, yeah. And, and uh, but also, one thing I want you to think about this the devil is the one, the dragon is behind all these kingdoms, all these mountains, all these nations, and all of this. And he's, he's jealous. He, don't, he wants all the attention for himself. And his objective from the beginning is to wipe who out? The Jews are God's chosen people. The Hebrews, I would prefer to say right there. Okay, and so if this is connected to Jerusalem, the, the very one that he's, you know, using to set up this world empire, this uh, one new world order, he's going to turn and devour and try to wipe Jerusalem off the face of the map right here. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will wage war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them because He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with Him are the called and chosen and faithful. Who are those with Him? Of course, that's going to be the saints. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And He said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, does New York really sit on, we could say there's people from all over the world live in New York, right? But um, it says the waters where you saw, but I believe this is talking about the, the tentacles are far reaching all over, all over the planet, right, so I to speak. Not every nation, but most of them. Yeah, but a lot of people read the waters and they get stuck there and they don't read all the way down and catch this part right here being the nations and the tongues. There again, it's metaphorically, we, we, Bible's teaching us in metaphors and in, and in, and in stories yeah. uh, and not literally here. This, this is symbolism, and, but in the symbolism, it also has a literal fulfillment. So, And the ten horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked, and will eat her flesh, and will burn her up with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose, and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. The, listen to this. The woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And that's a pretty big clue. Now see, this is where we as Americans like to think we're so important that Bible prophecy has to somehow hinge on we're the most powerful nation on the planet, right? Or so we think. But there is no powerful nation when God's, God laughs and has them in derision. So um, Washington, D.C., New York City, which this is the home of the, uh, the stock exchange, a lot of the trade of the world runs through New York City. They're supposed to, yes. Yeah, in the olden days, yeah. Yes. Now they can come in from the south or the north or the west. Okay, <laughs> right. But um, listen, the woman whom you saw is the great city. Turn right quick to uh, Revelation 11, I believe it's verse 8. Okay. And there we're going to have another reference right there. So that term, the great city, is mentioned a number, number of times okay. in Revelation. Revelation 11 and 8? Yeah. Where it talks about dead bodies? 
Yeah, and two prophets, and and it says they're going to be lying in the streets, yes. right? Yeah, okay, and fit. their dead bodies will lie in the streets. The great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Okay, hold on. Spiritually, this city is called Sodom in Egypt. Now, we talked about before how Tel Aviv is known as the gayest city on the planet, right? And the church didn't give it that title. That's uh, the world give it that title. Spiritually. This city is called Sodom. It's called Egypt. Now read the next line. Where also our Lord was crucified. Whoa, that's pretty, <laughs> that's a bullseye, right? Read, read that whole verse again. Yes. Uh, talking about the, uh, the, the two prophets uh, in Revelations. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually so called. That sounds like it's referring to the same city, don't it? If you were right in Revelation, if you put the great city and you, then you said the great city, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's picking it up. I can see that. Okay. See that. Go ahead. Of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and, go ahead. in Egypt. All right. Now, that's not bragging on them, calling them Sodom and Egypt. No, they, they do, though. They do. Uh, Tel Aviv, uh, we've said. Yeah. Tel Aviv also calls themselves, and they're proud of it to yeah. be the, the gayest city in the world. So, uh but anyway, y'all remember? Have you ever seen the teaching where um, some people do it and they show the mountains and how the cliffs and the valley and the mountain actually spells out the name of God, where God wrote His name, and also the um, the rock that's the dome of the rock. Okay, there's a rock there, and what is? Does anybody know what that rock is known as? That's on the Mount of Olives. That's, that's across the Kidron Valley up to the Mount of Olives is the Ascension Stone. That's, that, that's Mount Moriah. That's where Abraham come up. But it's known as... Are you as, looking for Golgotha? No. no. That's, okay. that, that's on the other side of town. Okay. Uh, but it's called the Foundation Stone. Okay. You ever, and that's where gotcha. it's... The you corner know, of the temple. No, the Foundation Stone that God created the earth Oh, from wow, that okay. stone. Okay, I did not now know. Now that's that. that's not from the Bible, but that that's in that's rabbi what, literature. Yeah, and so the um, I mean that's that's amazing stuff mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. So this woman, which you saw, is the great city. And then when when chapter eleven verse eight names it, and it even says, so, read that last line. Where also our Lord was crucified. And it calls the city Sodom. Now, and Jesus used Sodom just back in the days of Lot, you know, talking about Sodom, and and then calls it Egypt. So it, it calls one of those Egypt. Egypt it's it's like the mountain, one of those mountains or empires that existed prior to. Nebuchadnezzar's dream, you know, that uh, Daniel interpreted. So it even pulls it in a little tighter, talking about the woman whom you saw is the great city. So what you're saying is, you're saying quite possibly the great city that we're looking at and, and the woman who's the mother of all harlots quite possibly could be the city of Israel Herself. No, it's the city of Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, yeah, city of Jerusalem herself. Correct. Okay. okay. And that is a dead giveaway. There's other scripture that we're going to look at the, that talks about trade and this and that. But I already told you, you know, Israel itself is a tiny nation. 80% of the world's diamonds go through Israel. You, you didn't really even realize that. If who owns, who controls the banking system of the entire world? And this is what I've been showing you about what we call the, in, in the two of the letters of the seven churches, it says these people that say they're Jews, but they're not. They're of the synagogue of Satan. And this, it's this uh, Illuminati. Uh, they run the world through the banking system. The world is completely indebted to them. So in that respect, they reign over 
the kings of the earth. I can see that. You, you might be the pope and you control the um, religion to a large degree on the, in the world. You might have, you, America used to be the breadbasket of the world, right? You know, you, these people control the money of the world. This is where trade happens. Let's look at 18. Who heads up the world banks? Do you know right off? It's the... I, I know that's out of left field. Bilderbergs, it's these, the Illuminati, the, the Rockefellers, okay. the um, Council of 13. It's all these people that, um, that we've talked about behind the scenes that they control Hollywood, okay? And don't try to say, I mean, I love... I enjoyed so much going to Israel the times that I've went. I love the Jewish people. I love God's people. I love the Hebrew people. I love all people. But the Bible is describing a people that's purporting they're imposters, they're counterfeits, okay? So all I'm doing is identifying these. I'm not singling a people group out other than what the Bible plainly lays out and says these people are not who they say they are. Trying to get to the bottom of that and uncover that. Okay? So, and these people run the world. The, uh, who runs the financial system? Who, who sets the, the um, financial the, the interest rates for us? Uh, yeah, the Federal Reserve. Who, okay, who that now? Now, now listen, it's not a reserve and it's not federal. It's a person. That's no, right. no, it, it has nothing to do with yeah. the, you, the federal government of the United States. It's privately owned by a group, a small group of people that they loan, the same people loan money to both sides of, of any nation that goes to war. They, they loan money to both sides. They, they don't lose. War makes money for mm -hmm. these people, okay? And... Um, now tie this in, and I'm going to go down a little bit of rabbit trail, like the Georgia Guidestones, and somebody wants to reduce the world population down to 500 million. You know, if you there's maps laid out for this stuff. Um, but there needs to be a worker bee class, and there's going to be the one percent that lives like kings. Okay, and and then and there's a, there's a strategy behind what's going on. Let's read this a little further. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illumined with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird. Remember in the past when I've shown you that... Uh, Satan's kingdom is like a fan, has a tree, and it says all the, in, in talking about a parable, the Must birds be. of the field lodged in this tree. It was a bush that grew up, and it turned into something that wasn't supposed to be. And all the birds of the field lodged in that tree. This is another reference to demonic spirits being, that's not a birds per se, that's a demonic spirit. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the passion of her immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. Um, in the King James it says, and by her sorceries. And it, and it ties that into pharmakia. All right. Now, now see, I, I do want to say, I hope, it's, I hope it, if I'm too early on, just tell me you won't come back to it. But I think you called me up here because I have always, in our discussions, I've always told Brother Kelly, I believe that Mystery Babylon is not just America, not just New York or not just D.C. or not just a city like that. I, I've always felt it was the United States of America. And so, uh, or was you planning on getting this to just a little bit later on? No. But I've, I've always felt in studying the book of Revelations because of our pharmakia, because of our sorceries, uh, because of our false doctrine, uh, th there's, I don't want to be little churches and, and look bad on, I love the church, 
the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the rock that's going to stand through the test of time. But there are so many churches in America right now that are filled with false doctrine and they're spreading their lies all over the earth and they're, they're just uh, they're, they're sending missionaries out in mission fields that's actually sowing false teachings and false lies that America right now is misleading the world. So I, I think you purposely brought me up here because I've always believed that we, pipe, we quite possibly fit the bill for the mystery of Babylon as being the United States of America. But kind of what you're telling me is you're saying you're opening the door to saying think about this because it quite possibly could be Jerusalem instead. We're, America is like, for the past, for 50 years, been like a, uh, a bulldog. And we, we've been a puppet. The strings have been pulled by somebody else. You got a point. Like a little, a little feist dog, right? A little bitty dog has been pulling the strings. And through subterfuge and propaganda warfare, and see, you're not allowed to question anything that happened. If you're not allowed to ask questions, somebody, see, if they make it illegal, and I've got some things on my phone today about um, different people take, slowly taking things down off the line, and you won't even be able to research it. Why, why can't somebody have a difference of opinion? Right. Okay? But um, if and I've shown you, we talked about this, the proof. That, you know, 9-11 was an inside job. There was somebody wanted the bulldog, the bully, to do something to somebody else. And you pull certain people's strings and everybody jumps on board because they, you know, it's the bait and switch. Shows you one thing, but it's a whole other thing. And, and, and this is kind of how through this operation, this modus operandi, the devil's been running things for a long time. Well, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Muslims do say that Jerusalem, Israel, is the great Satan, and they claim that America is the little Satan. So that's, that's actually how they view us. Ahmadinejad so. said, says, and I'm going to agree with him on this, he said the people that are in charge of Israel are not Jews. And he added in the same sentence, and the people who run the United States are not Christians. That, my friends, he is 100% right. That, my friends, is a key to unlock a lot of what we're talking about. The, the, what appears to be going on is not reality. We live in a dream world, in a sense. This is where... We really are and have, most people are sheeple. And, and it's, uh, a, they, the, the picture is painted and all this, but all things, all kinds of things are going down and it's happening so fast, the average American or the average individual cannot keep up and they're totally subject to the normalcy bias, right? We still want to live the American dream and we got kids and grandkids and great grandkids and, you know, this is things going to go on. Look at history. Uh, and look at the current events and look at what's going on. Listen to what God is saying about, I'm fixing to wrap this thing up. There's, there's a, God has pulled the curtains back to those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. And you can see it. But a lot of people are just being swept up in the, by the news media and, you know, railroaded down a certain path and, and that's, that's where everybody's at. Most people can't, their mind will not allow them to even look above or see what's really going on. So let me get back on this and we got about 10 minutes. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. For her sins have piled up as high as heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back even as she is paid and give back to her double according to her deeds in the cup which she has mixed. Mix twice as much for her. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about something you said a while ago, and I don't have time to get into it, but I was thinking about a lesson and I titled it The Fourth and Final Harlot. 
You remember, Brother Dickie, way back when we was looking at what happened in the Garden of Eden and one of the meanings for the name, and ladies, don't, I'm not, this is not personal. This is, and then once we get past the Garden of Eden, it turns into a religious thing, okay? But also, God shows a woman, a virgin lady to bring the Messiah, right? And also, in the same respect, God shows, you know, we are a, supposed to be a virgin bride, right? In, in, a, in our betrothal period. So when you understand that the marriage relationship is the perfect picture of how our relationship should be with the Lord, oh, uh, the very name, meaning, look it up in the, in the Strong's, one of the meanings for woman means uh, prostitute, means whore right there. And then when was not God married to, was not God married to Israel in the Old Testament? He said as much. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the scripture, to, but there's several. He divorced her. Why? Yeah. Because she, he called her a harlot. Yeah. And, and, and let, I, let me get to this and hold yeah. that thought, right? During the New Testament, the, um, much of the church, now we're getting into the Catholic church, right? And, and a lot of the babies or the offshoots of the Catholic church, they're, you know, they're scolded by the Lord. They said, hey, I'm going to remove your candlestick out of the way. Much of the, the church, the same thing has happened and to where there is no good news. Now, that might be uh, good news in the fact that it's soothing and it's what people want to hear, but the good news is that you can be saved from all this, from this judgment, that, that Jesus made a way for us. But much of the church is not a pure, undefiled bride. She is a harlot. I'm not talking about anybody here or this church, you know. But so this religious system at the end is an amalgamation of all of that. And she's like the fourth and final harlot, so to speak. Go ahead. What did you want to say? Yeah, and I, I think while I, was, I didn't want to cut you off, thank you. But um, um, I think kind of what you're going at is God's not referring to her as a harlot and he didn't make her a harlot because no. he's down on women. No. He done that because we have God the Father, God the Son, the church is the bride. If anything, uh, who can find a precious woman? Proverbs 31. Right. For, for her, her, her price is greater than rubies. Yeah. So in other words, if anything, a, the, a rightful woman is the greatest treasure in all of the world. And so what he's saying is, is instead of having the greatest treasure in all of the world, it's the exact opposite which is what can hurt the worst in all of the world, which would be an unfaithful woman. In that respect, so, all of mankind is yeah. guilty. Yeah, and it's not because he's uh, down on women. It's just no. metaphorically, Christ is married to the bride, which is us. Exactly. This, this has nothing to do with being with the female gender. It's just verbiage that Christ uses or the Bible and, uses. And this is, this is also, you know, we're getting off on what we're talking about, but the example for God to give that he gave us was, a marriage, one man and one woman. Why do you think the uh, gender is being attacked? He's trying to make us all be uh, neutered. Where we, because then we, you know we we have a choice. You can choose whether you're a male or female. And just on the news this morning, and I, I saw where all of women's sports are going to be ruined and changed because they're going to allow transgenders. I mean, a man is physically stronger. I don't care if it's a, a like a, you know. That is an attack on females. Is okay, so see what the devil, he's blindsided in his whole, God's whole plan for one man and one woman, you know, united in holy matrimony to produce offspring in their image, which is in the image of God. And from the beginning, the devil has tried, tried to ruin that, and it goes all the way through to where even as a whole, we as the body of Christ, not just this church, but everybody that names the name of Christ worldwide as a believer, you know, the devil's trying to 
neuter us to, and, and trying to shut us down to where we can't produce offspring by even talking about or witnessing. You know, it, it's uh, look at his plan and what he's been trying to do. It's, it's been very successful. So let me read a little bit more. He's going to pay her back. This woman, he's going to pay her back double to the degree that she glorified herself and lived sensuously. To this, but this is men and women. This is not just, it's just the right. picture, right? right? To the same degree, give her torment and mourning for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I am not a widow. Now see, when, when the Lord divorced Jerusalem, is not Jerusalem going to be destroyed? There's going to be an earthquake that splits the city apart into three parts. And what is, this is why I've been trying to show people about the temple Jesus was talking about and referring to was his body, not the temple that they're trying to build back. Because is, does, is the Lord receiving sacrifices through that system anymore? No. no. What good does it do to build that back? God's not going to be, he don't care nothing about that temple. That's why, he, you know, it was desecrated. He's going to wipe that whole thing out. And even the city, Jerusalem, is not going to be no more. New Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. That's, that's a lot deeper than what people realize right there, you know. You, um... Let me read a few more verses. For this reason, in one day her plagues will come. Now, she, she, she said, I sit as a queen, this is in her heart, and I am not a widow and will never see mourning. Don't forget these Orthodox Hebrew people that I've been showing you that disagree with their own nation being established back. Why would they do that? Why? Because, see... These people, I mean, the, 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 the ones there now, they'll send a missile over there and blow somebody up. God don't have to allow them, you know, and now that's not murder. That's In war, it's looked at a little bit different. But you don't throw subterfuge and lying and doing things under the table. God don't work that way. He's not bringing his kingdom on this earth like that. For this reason, in one day her plagues will come, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For the Lord God who judges her is strong. And the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality and live sensuously with her will weep and lament over her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing at a distance because of the fear of her torment saying, Woe, woe, the great city, Babylon, the strong city. For in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and every kind of citron wood and every article of ivory and every article made from very costly wood and bronze and iron and marble and cinnamon and spice and incense and perfume and frankincense and wine and olive oil and fine flour and wheat and cattle and sheep and cargoes of horses and chariots and slaves and human lives. Even slaves and... But Olive oil's thrown in there. But if you control the money system, the monetary system, you control all of that. The fruit you long for has gone from you, and all things that were luxurious and splendid have passed away from you, and men will no longer find them. The merchants of these things who, who became rich from her will stand at a distance because of the fear of her torment, weeping and mourning, saying, Woe, woe, the great city who... who she who was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great wealth has been laid waste. And every shipmaster and every passenger and sailor and as many as make their living by the sea stood at a distance. And were crying out as they saw the smoke of her burning saying, what city is like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, Woe, woe, that the great city in which all who had ships at sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, because God has pronounced judgment for you against her. Then part of this, 
in the New Testament, it, it said that uh, uh, all the prophets had to be killed in Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah. That is kind of why are, why are the apostles and why are the prophets to rejoice over this? Because all the true prophets that the Bible is referring to is, is, were killed in Jerusalem. Then a strong angel took a, up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will not be found any longer. And the sound of harpists and musicians and flute players and trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. And no craftsman of any craft will be found in you any longer. And the sound of a meal will not be heard in you any longer. And the light of a lamp will not shine in you any longer. And we're, I mean, Jerusalem originally was the apple of God's eye and the light, light of the world, all right? And, and the voice of the bridegroom and bride will not be heard in you any longer, for your merchants were the great men of the earth, because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. See, the same people control the pharmakia part. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who had been slain on the earth. All that is information given to try to decipher and come out and shake it, put it all in a big funnel and come out. All right, who is Mystery Babylon? And, you know, we're not going to answer that tonight. So we, I wasn't putting you on the spot like that anyway. But anything you want to add? Yeah, the, the only thing I want to add is... is uh... I just want to say uh, we were using uh, biblical metaphors about pure women and hearts and things like that. Now, now I do want to say this because I feel this in my spirit as, as you was teaching. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that we're judging the females in any way. <laughs> Absolutely and, not. And, and what the Bible's talking about here is this this is an unrepentant uh, bride, is what this is, and we, right. which is my, so any any female that may be watching this broadcast and may be feeling condemnation or. Hey, there's forgiveness at the blood of the cross. There's forgiveness at the ground of the cross. And anything or any man that's done anything wrong, we can all get forgiveness. This is talking about an unrepentant system that's fallen away from God is, is what it's talking about. And, and it uses metaphors because it's, it's relating to people is, is, why, it's, is why it's doing that. So. What the, the saying that it's, everything's level at the foot of the cross mm -hmm. and in, in Christ there's neither male nor female, right? There's not race. There's not all these different things. We're one in Christ, right? So this is just the, the symbolism that the Lord chose to use in the Bible so that we could relate to this. And, and I hope y'all get that. I know y'all get that that are sitting here. But um, this is some deep stuff. And it, I mean, it takes not just hours, but weeks and I'm gonna go back and, years and I'm, decades I'm read it of, again. of yeah, I'm going to read it <laughs> you know, again. And then information comes along and you see something, you a word, you can look it up in the Greek and trace it back and you get more meaning and it unfolds and it's another piece of the puzzle. But a lot of people wonder and have tried to identify who Mystery Babylon is. When does it fall? When can we be watching for it? This is going to, one, we need to be looking for the Lord's coming. <laughs> Right. Good answer. I'm looking for the, the trumpet. I'm listening for the trumpet sound. My eyes are on the eastern skies. So, um, but that is this is the book that will be blessed for reading it and studying it. You know. All right. Well, God bless you tonight. We'll stop right there.